So, uh, hi, uh, my name is Bishek. I work in Red Hat in the uh, Plumbers team, um, uh, primary system D. And today I'm going to be talking about the merging of the user bin and user as bin directories. And uh, this is part of a long history uh, of, uh, well, multiple directories to deliver uh, executables uh, that executors that are part of the content provided by the distribution. So we, we have uh, we have bin and as bin and uh, bin and user bin, and so uh, this horizontal split um, was removed um, 12 years ago, uh, and now we only have the directories on the right side, and the, those two are links. Uh, to, to, the, to the user be user directories, uh, but uh, this vertical split, uh, well, it's still in place, and uh, I want to get rid of it. And uh, well, to talk about this, the vertical split, I'll, I'll have to talk about the horizontal split uh, to kind of explain the whole story. So, the story uh, starts in 1969. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you can see uh, the uh, PDP-7, there are some magnetic tapes, uh, very nice machine, uh, if a bit limited, Unix is written, and then um, it gets ported, uh, re essentially written for PDP-11, and it's a huge upgrade, and there's two disks, 1.5 mag megabytes each. And uh, well, as part of this development, the operating system grows so much that it does not fit on the first disk. And um, uh, the second disk was initially intended for a home directory, so it was mounted on slash user, uh, but it had to be, well, part of it was reused for uh, the part of the operating system that didn't fit on the first disk. And we end up with the, well, so a third disk is attached, uh, and home directories are moved to the new mount point slash home. And at this point, somewhere in the middle of 1970s, we have the layout that we are using um, until today, more or less. Uh, so uh, at this point, uh, uh, I mean, the initial reasons why the slash user uh, was used for part of the operating system made sense. Uh, it also made sense much later when uh, the Unix uh, standard layout was adopted by Linux. So file systems uh, were not great um, and they, they would break and especially if, you, if the machine crashed and you had to reboot, uh, there was a, a file system check uh, the file system check also happened at other random times uh, based on time and, and number of mounts. Uh, and if you had, uh, I mean, the larger the file system was, the more painful the whole thing was. Um, and well, hardware was also not very reliable. It made sense to split things up. Uh, and then, you know, stuff happened, right? I mean, the hardware grew better and people invented journaling file systems. Um, I had to look this up on Wikipedia. In 1990, Unix had a, the journaling file system. Uh, if somebody was using Windows NT in 1993, it had a, a NTFS, also became a journaling file system. Uh, more relevant for us is Extended 3 in 2001. Uh, the journaling file system means that if you crash, you replace the journal, you don't need to check the whole file system every time. Um, and another very important thing is that people use initRDs to boot. So with an initRD, you have a subset of the operating system that is used to mount uh, a subset of the operating system that is used to mount slash user the whole operating system. And this three-way duplication does, does not make sense. So somewhere in the middle of 2000s, the split uh, 
of users just stopped making sense at a technical level. Um, in the meantime, disks have gotten much larger. So the, the original problem was the 1.5 megabyte disk, and then you know, like, uh, I mean, disks were uh, more, uh, hundreds of gigabytes. Uh, by the time. Um, so it's certainly enough to fit the whole operating system. And uh, well, about 10 years after uh, um, the technical reasons for the split went away, uh, people decided to get rid of it. And in Fedora, this happened in uh, 2012. There was a proposal for Fedora 17 to, to um, move everything under slash user. Um, Uh, in case you are wondering uh, why, um, I mean, it's always a, a subject that comes up, whether it's better to get, get, get rid of slash user and move everything back into the root directories or move everything from the, from the root directories to under user. Uh, the second option is nicer because you end up with just one directory that contains the whole operating system and in the end it's, that's cleaner. Um, and this change, uh, wasn't painless. It was, uh, there was a Dracut module that would um, apply the file system layout change at boot when you upgraded. And um, it didn't always work as designed. Um, so this was painful, but it actually made sense to, to do it uh, and it, because it allowed the whole system to be simplified. And this gets me to the topic of technical debt. Uh, Wikipedia uh, says that the technical debt is the implied cost of future reworking required when choosing an easy but limited solution instead of a better approach that could take more time. The problem with the definition is that uh, here we are talking about more complicated solution uh, instead of a limited solution that prevents us from, so uh, my definition for now is well, technical debt, something that made sense at the time, but now is just, you know, causing problems. Uh, so, and this gets me to the today's topic uh, of the split of bin and s bin, and user bin and user s bin, and user local bin and user local s bin, and uh, opt bin and opt s bin, and so on and so on. Um, so the split was introduced uh, because we have utilities for system administration. The file system hierarchy uh, says that utilities used for system administration and the root only commands go into uh, the SBIN directories. And uh, back in 1969, the split was already in place uh, for, for this reason. So let's look at an example. We have the mkE2fs command. It writes the file system structure to a partition, and to write to a partition, you need to be root, so of course it's a root-only command. And uh, as everybody knows, this is completely false because it can also write to a file, uh, right? You write the file system to a file, you, you boot the file system under QEMU, you never need to be root. So this, this, this original dichotomy is just uh, not true anymore. Back in six, 1969, the tools were much more limited and they did much less, and this split was much more reasonable. Um, but also, the way that we do uh, administrative tasks has changed, and uh, back then maybe you would log in as root, do everything as root, and then at the end of the day, log out. Uh, now we try to uh, run everything as an unprivileged user, only elevate privileges when necessary. And uh, an important part of this is uh, Polkit. Um, so 2006, 18 years ago, um, uh, Polkit allows an unprivileged user program to uh, temporarily elevate privileges for a specific operation. And uh, also uh, very important, I mean, the kind of the same idea, completely different implementation is sudo, which again, uh, you, you run as a normal root, uh, as, a, as a normal user, and you use sudo just for specific tasks, and then 
so the, this whole idea that you have programs that would only be used by root and programs that would only be used by normal users just doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, and yeah, so, so this, this idea of has been is technical debt uh, and it causes problems. So um, if you try to be portable, um, the split between been and has been is arbitrary. And if you try to be portable, uh, different distributions make different assignments and then you end up, well, trying, you know, like maintaining a mapping of where each distribution puts put the given file. And this is particularly annoying for systemd unit files because uh, systemd makes a big effort to uh, be a, like a portability glue layer between distributions. And systemd used to require full paths for exec start and other commands and then the whole file would be completely portable and the same on every distribution except for this user bin or user has been path, uh, which was very annoying. Uh, and in fact, we have been putting uh, bin and has been uh, in path since 2008. Uh, back then, the primary motivation was sudo because it's get, it gets really weird if you are, uh, if you call sudo as a normal user and you have a different path than, uh, than, than root. Um, and systemd uh, sets the environment for everything it starts, so services uh, and user services too. Uh, and it includes both has been and been in the path since uh, the very first release. Uh, so somewhere around, uh, well, let's say 2010, it really stopped making sense to have the split. And now it's, you know, 2024, so it's time to get rid of it. It takes a while. Uh, and uh, how, how, what, what, what would we do to make this happen? Uh, the change proposal was submitted for Fedora 41. When I was submitting the talk, I thought that this would be really implemented. I will be talking about, like, in, you know, past tense. This is not true, unfortunately. Uh, uh, and, uh, Anyway, the, the, the basic idea is to uh, make all the four uh, been as been user been uh, and user as been uh, mm, well three of those to make them sim links to slash user slash bin uh, and you know how, how uh, before I talk about the details of the merge like a quick I don't know like intro reminder how file systems are constructed. Uh, I wasn't really aware of this until I, I worked on this change. Um, so the definition of the layout happens in two packages. So our, the RPM package uh, provides the definitions of the uh, bindir and sbindir macros, and all the packages that uh, package content use those macros to specify the appropriate, I mean, use, use those macros to specify the location in the file system. Uh, and the file system package provides the actual layout on disk. And when RPM is unpacking packages onto an existing file system, it actually follows symlinks. So uh, RPM provides the uh, official locations of files, but the actual layout of, of on the f on the on disk, which is determined by a file system, determines the the actual physical locations. Uh, and um, the uh, the merge uh, well, so the, so the merge needs to touch those two packages and then just rebuild everything for the new worldview. And uh, the plan was to make this, um, to do the whole change using uh, just packaging changes. So there is no Dracut module to, to update systems, is that we have, uh, uh, I mean, we, we stay entirely in the packaging layer, uh, and it can happen gradually. So um, before, the, before adjusting the file system RPM, we uh, check which packages would have issues, we uh, update them, and I'll talk about the details in a moment, in a way that, that can be done ahead of time. Uh, 
then when packages are rebuilt in the in the new uh, like in the updated build route they get modified but at all time you can install uh, new packages in the old system and old packages in the new system and uh, like I mean systems get upgraded and modified during the upgrade uh, so uh, we uh, updated the packaging guidelines to get rid of uh, uh, the rule to use user has been but when looking at the guidelines I also discovered that there is a, a guideline to uh, that remained from 14 years ago no tw uh, 12 years ago sorry for from the from the merge uh, that packages are supposed to install files in the historical locations I mean the official the ofi I mean because in fact, on disk, it's all symlinked, like user bin is, uh, bin is symlinked to user bin. But if uh, uh, before 2012 the location was in bin, then the, uh, the package is supposed to say that the file is located in bin. Uh, and um, this is rather, I would say, complex, and almost no package got this right, even though it was right there in the packaging guidelines. So this was, I mean, both of those things were dropped. Uh, then uh, the SLinux policy uh, had to be adjusted. Uh, this mostly consisted of removing stuff from the SLinux policy and saying that uh, bin and uh, as bin and uh, user bin and user as bin are all equivalent. So a couple hundred lines of policy were removed. And then we discovered there is a whole module that wasn't active because it wasn't matching paths, but when we matched the paths, it became active, so this also had to be removed. Uh, and then the, the conditional fixes, and they essentially fall into two categories um, that kind of overlap. So if a package assumes uh, that directories are separate, uh, and it, for example, tries to symlink files between directories or move files between the directories or stuff like that, it will fail to build. And if a package uh, has f files with the same name in the two directories or a symlink, then it will fail to install. And I mean, there is quite often the same packages which ex exhibit both, uh, both problems. So we had to, um, well, uh, apply uh, fixes to this in a way that, I mean, it was conditionalized on, on the file system layout so that we can then, when they are built, everything works as expected. Uh, and another thing is that uh, packages have dependencies between them and they use the official paths. Uh, so uh, we have a package that has a user as been full. We have another package that requires user as been full. Uh, and then when the providing packages rebuild, the file moves, and the dependent package would be, mm, mm, fail to install. I mean, RPM would say that it cannot satisfy the dependency. Um, so uh, to, to fix that, uh, uh, a little bit of uh, packaging magic is needed. So again, we make it like a conditional thing, and we add a virtual provides uh, in A for the old name, uh, and we rely on the file system package to make the symlink for us. And this requires here uh, is uh, so that the new enough file system package is installed so that it actually provides the functionality to make the symlink. And um, with that in place, uh, right? I mean, we update the definitions in RPM and the file system and uh, rebuild uh, a bunch of packages. And in principle, I was expecting at this point the merge would happen. And uh, I submitted a side tag for uh, testing, uh, and uh, Adam uh, Williamson said no, uh, because well there were there were problems, uh, lots of problems. Oh, uh, a bunch of problems. I mean, some problems were fixed, but other problems were too much to fix, and uh, so there is like three issues that were too big to to solve in time for Fedora 41. So that's why the change got delayed for Fedora 42. Uh, so the first one is that uh, Lorax has a like magic phase where it does uh, removes files by path. And then when you change the path, it rem doesn't remove the files or, the, or remo removes the wrong files because it's a like a list of include and exclude patterns with globs. And 
Um, it's a tool that builds the installation image. And uh, in fact, this was already broken because the paths, like when people moved files in the past, the globs were supposed to remove files so that the file system does not grow too large, and the installation image does not grow too large. They weren't actually uh, working, but nobody noticed it, the, the, it was just growing. And, uh, but unfortunately, in, in my case, it removed files like bin uh, make swap, and then the, the, the system would not put properly. Uh, so Lorax, uh, OS3, uh, RPM OS3, I, I, I'm not sure where exactly to assign the blame. Uh, the tooling does not use file system. They use a, like a d different way to construct the file system, and of course this wasn't adjusted. Uh, and it turns out that, well, that then things were broken. Uh, and the third part was actually totally my fault. I forgot about the case where you uh, take the um, new package that doesn't, uh, doesn't have on, uh, any of the requires for magic, um, uh, for file system ma uh, magic to, to make the symlink because there's no other package that, that has requires uh, on the path. You rebuild it so the file moves and then you install it in an old system and then the, well, the, 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 the file moves, there is no symlink unless we install a new file system uh, package. So, uh, we, as packages are rebuilt, we need to introduce a requirement on the file system version so that like partial upgrades are not broken. And I did not take this into account. So uh, the updated plan is to uh, adjust Lorax. This has already been done uh, twice because there's a separate configuration for ELN. Uh, adjust file system. This is, I mean, the pull requests have been put up um, file system who have a dependency generator that will inject the right requires, and to fix uh, the RPM OS3 tooling. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard, and I, I was promised it, it will happen. And then, uh, well, sometime after uh, 41 branching, uh, try again. Uh, and um, once that happens, uh, if you, if, you have a, uh, if you install a new system, then you get the new file system layout and uh, user has been is always a symlink and it's very simple. And if you upgrade the system, uh, file system will uh, create symlinks for individual files that are moved. And once all files have been moved and user has been only contains just a bunch of symlinks, then it removes everything and makes the whole thing a, a symlink. And uh, once one that's, once that's done, system D uh, simplifies its, uh, the paths it's set for everything and it doesn't include user as bin anymore. So that's the plan. Uh, yeah, and the, the end result on upgraded systems and new systems is that, that like the three directories are symlinks uh, to, uh, to user bin and all the paths work equivalently. And uh, Right, to summarize some lessons I learned that, uh, I don't know, Fedora is just insanely uh, complex ecosystem. There's just many ways that people consume the content. I've been active for a long time, but I still miss things. Um, and it's hard to change things. But if you want the change to happen, you have to, to communicate with people and like verbosely and as early as possible uh, because, well, people have useful comments. Uh, but even with communication is that it's not enough. Um, like all the problems that are, uh, that, that actually derail the, the change, uh, I don't know, multiple people looked at this and it wasn't discovered until it was discovered by, 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 uh, by testing. Uh, and the testing that we have is pretty good, but it's not easy to use, like for example, I don't know, I would love to, to run the tests locally. Um, I learned that there is a way to, we, this can, we can make this happen, but it's, um, uh, so uh, Adam Williamson says that we can uh, uh, do a test rebuild from, from a COP repo and 
in this particular case, this would be the way to go. Uh, so this is something to, uh, well, something I didn't know a few days ago when I was preparing the slides. Uh, and side tags are wonderful because in this particular case, only two packages needed to be uh, changed in this kit and rebuilt. And all the other changes just uh, were done at build time. So the side tag was dumped and the whole change was gone. Uh, and um, I mean, it seems that it's still possible to do things. Uh, just I mean, it no, takes, a, takes, a, takes a while. Uh, I don't know, like I'm at 25 minutes. Do I have time for questions or? I really enjoyed this because I never knew why there were those different directories. So I really appreciate the history. Um, the technical reasons for it obviously have changed and for good reason it makes a whole lot of sense to go down to one directory. Can you explain again uh, why user slash bin is a better option than just slash bin? Um, so we uh, like to think of the operating system as a, as a resource and um, Mm, and we, I mean, like, for example, with the whole system being under slash user, if you want the operating system to be read only, you make this one directory read only. Uh, the other way, you would have to make root read only and then punch write, writable uh, f uh, mounts for etc and var and maybe something else. Uh, if it's a single directory, uh, you can do an atomic replacement. So the kernel now has like this uh, option where you mount a new file system under an existing mount and then remove the old mount. So you can do an atomic replacement of such user. The other way you can do it, but it wouldn't be atomic. It just fits our uh, modern technology with mount namespaces and thinking about the whole uh, system as a, as a single thing better. Just me. Uh, uh, not a question, but a comment. Uh, I'm v very much looking forward to this because uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. And the whole 1.5 mega mega division from uh, 1971 uh, is completely outdated now. So, so very much looking forward to to this. So, thank you. <laughs>